Hey, what's going on, y'all? Today we're going to recreate this poster here, and this is inspired by Blue Note record covers, such as these ones right here. So if you look, there's really cool stuff going on with the stacking of the type in this one. In this one, as you can see, they got this image at the bottom, and then the stacking of the type here. Also some wide type mixed with some condensed type. And then in this one, you see this really nice blue color coming through in the photo, and then this pop of white right here to really make that type stand out. So I start here on the Library of Congress website. Basically, you can get copyright free images from here to use. So I searched for eyes and filtered by photos, prints and drawings. And that led me to this image right down here. So I went ahead and downloaded a TIFF of this, which you can do right here. And I brought that into Photoshop. First things first, I know I only really want the eyes. So I'll just go ahead and drag a rectangular marquee here around the part of the image that I want to keep. Probably something like that. And then from there, I'm just gonna go down here and hit this mask. So then that'll clip it to just the part that we want. And I think I want to add a little bit more over here. So actually with the mask selected here, as you can see, see this has the image selected, this has the mask selected. Select that, and I just want to fill that with white. So I'll hit Option, Delete, and then that actually adds to my selection. So there's a few adjustments that we're gonna need to do to this image to get it looking how we want it. So go to our adjustments, add a levels adjustment right on here. And then in the properties, what I wanna do is just bring this black slider over, bring this white slider way over, so basically we're left with just a black and white image. From here, I just wanna bitmap the image so it literally is just gonna be only black and only white. So go up here, image, mode, grayscale, it's already grayscale. So I'll go to bitmap. So I'll just do 50% threshold and then hit okay. So when you bitmap an image like that, it turns this into a background layer and locks it and there's really not much you can do with it. So I'm actually gonna go back up to image here, go to mode and go to grayscale. It'll ask you the size ratio, just do one, one to one, hit okay. And for our purposes, that's probably gonna be okay, but I might wanna go image mode RGB if I thought I was gonna be adding color to this. So now that our file is in RGB again, I can go ahead and unlock this. I'm gonna go select color range, and just select all this white here. And with that, I'm just gonna hit delete and get rid of all of that stuff. So basically I'm left with just these black pixels on a transparent background. So now we can actually just select this layer and click and hold and just drag this up into our other file here. And there it is. I actually had some that I was happy with earlier. So I'm gonna delete this and use those. So the next thing would just be to get some type into these negative spaces here. So I'll head on over to Illustrator, and here I'm just using Nimbus Sans, which is an Adobe font. So you can use that for free if you have a Creative Cloud subscription. So I'm just gonna copy and paste these back into Photoshop. I'll meet you there and I'll speed it up while I compose them. Now I'm pretty happy with the way this type is looking, but I think there's a few adjustments that'll help it match the uh, half tones better in our images. So basically you just wanna make sure you're working with smart objects. I am, because I brought these over as smart objects, but if you didn't have smart objects, you would just right click and choose create smart object, which would be right up here, convert to smart object. So make sure you have the smart objects. And then I'm just gonna go up to filter, Blur, and I'm gonna choose Gaussian Blur. Give this a Gaussian Blur, that's way too much. So give it a Gaussian Blur, maybe around two pixels. And next, this is why we did Smart Filters or a Smart Object, because we can actually toggle this stuff on and off and we could adjust it as well if we needed to. So next, you go up to Filter, Sharpen, and Unsharp Mask. From here, you just basically jack these things way, way up so that it gets sharp again, but it gives you these like rounded corners and it kind of just fits that half tone a little bit better. So from there, I think the type is looking a little bit too smooth. Like if we zoom way in here, type's really smooth and then these half tones are a little more jagged. 
So I want to try and match that a little better. So in order to do that, I'll come up to Filter. I'll go to Distort and Ripple. So in here, if I zoom in a little bit more, you can see what this is doing. I have it set to small. You can do small, medium, and large. I have it set to small and 35%. You definitely don't want to jack this up too much. Otherwise, it gets super crazy like that. So I'll go back to 35%, and it just gives it this wavy edge. So then I'll go ahead and hit OK. And as we can see, it has this cool wavy edge, and it matches just a little bit better with our type. So I just want to go ahead and do all the same steps with the Alter the Future type, and I'll speed that part up. All right, so I think this already looks awesome, but I think the whole thing could use like a little bit of a noisy texture. So I'll go ahead and add a new layer here. And then I'm going to come over to my um, color picker here and go in. And basically, we want to just use this HSB here. And that stands for hue, saturation, and brightness. We just want to make everything zero and then the brightness to be 50. So basically, as you can see, this is just a middle gray. So from there, I'm just going to hit Option Delete on my keyboard. And that just fills that entire layer with our gray. So what we want to do is come to our layer blending modes here and go ahead and choose, if I zoom out a little bit, go ahead and choose overlay. So all of a sudden, we don't see that layer at all. So a middle gray set to overlay basically wipes it out. But what we're going to do is add noise to this layer because that will actually show up. So go up here, filter noise and add noise from here we can just kind of see what looks good i think that's definitely too intense so try something maybe around five and okay I, i'm thinking that actually looks quite good i might even bump it up to something like eight and i'm definitely digging that and you want to make sure that you're using uniform and monochromatic so i'll go ahead and hit okay and you can kind of see that that's just adding a really subtle noise which I really like for the background, but I think it might actually be a little too subtle uh, for some of the other parts of this image. So what I'm actually going to do, let me just go ahead and select my faces layer here, and then kind of the same thing, filter, noise, and add noise. And let's just see, so 8's too subtle, okay, 56, that's way too much. I just kind of want to play with this. I think maybe something like 20 uh, could be a sweet spot for this. And yeah, I think that looks really sweet. So I'll hit OK. And I'm going to zoom back out here and just do the same thing to our See the Future type. And on the Alter the Future, since it's white, the 20 amount was a little bit too much. So I'm just going to bring this back maybe somewhere like 5. And I think that matches pretty well. So I'll hit OK. All right, so that's it, and this is our finished poster. If I do say so myself, I think it's pretty sweet, and it's cool that it's only two colors, because if you think of this white as your paper color, then you have black and blue, and you could easily screen print that or something, and hang it out on the street or whatever, and it's this kind of cool propaganda-looking poster. So anyways, thanks for following along. That's going to do it for today's video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow me over on Instagram, where I post short tips and tricks about design. I'll see you next time.